Lyon, in the mid-16th century, was a flourishing city. Sitting on the crossroads of the French and Italian culture during both renaissances, Lyon developed a sense of cultural freedom that was pushed by new intellectual ideas that were able to freely circle within society. This was due to the distance from the repressive scholastic authority that existed in the Sorbonne in Paris. The city was also able to flourish due to not having to pay taxes and hosting large annual market fairs. Lyon quickly found itself full of artists, mathematicians, scientists, and writers, all with the goal to revive the classical antiquity. French poetry and literature from this time were predominantly written by men, and it was believed that women did not have the capabilities to become authors. Louise Labbé was born in 1524 into the family of rope makers. Being born into this occupation and later marrying into it as well, Labbé was well on the bottom of the social caste. Louise Labbé is said to have been inspired by Parnet de Guillet Reims that were published in 1545. In the preface, a humanist author named Antoine de Moulin calls to the women of Lyon to come together and work for the future and the greater glory of their city. Louise LeBay had marveled at the success of young women authors that were there before her time, and she often wondered how they were able to become celebrated within the constraints of society that had restricted women's education. Labbé establishes anger to the men of her time and she believed that women might have become so much more if they weren't constrained by the oppressions of men. She says, to show men how wrong they were to deprive us of the benefit and recognition that these things might have given us. At the time, women's education was used to improve one's morals and courtly love was bookish as Louise Labbé herself had thought. Instead, she favored ideas of fame and freedom that were derived from liberal studies, which at the time were only tailored towards men's education. And in 1555, the Lyon printer Jean de Tourne published Louis Labbé's oeuvres, or works. This consisted of 24 love sonnets, a debate between Cupid and Foley, three elegacies, and 24 other poems written by other authors in her phrase. Louise Labbé stresses the importance of education for women. Her oeuvres open with an apology letter towards the education of women and telling them that the time had come that the harsh laws of men no longer prevent women from applying themselves to the liberal arts and disciplines. It seems to me that those who have the opportunity ought to use this honest freedom, which our sex has so longer desired to learn them. She believes that only through writing and self-expression can a woman find lasting fulfillment. Her desires, the women of her social position, aspire to read and write in order to achieve positions of power and respect in society. She says, the good will which I bear to our sex is to see it not in beauty alone, but also in knowledge and virtue, to surpass or equal man. Louise Labbé's feminism stems out of a humanist concern with individuals, recognizing that they are both full of flaws and potential. Her poems are told from three different points of view, those of the great Semiramis, the unnamed old woman, and her as a speaker. Labbé determines that Semiramis deserves respect because her heart had led her in the wrong direction, and she demonstrates the need for women's desires to learn and grow themselves. Labbé tries to create a community of women, and her style of writing creates a draw towards female readers into the group as though they themselves could be the narrator. Louise Labbé believes that a woman rarely meets a man who can truly reciprocate her love, the essential theme of her sonnets is the suffering endured by the female speaker's unrealistic dreams of love. These sonnets demonstrate how love destroys one's autonomy and propels the female self trajectory onto a path where she has no control and only false images of true happiness. Unfortunately, not everyone agrees with Louise Labbé even to this day, not only with her arguments in feminism, but with her existence entirely. 
In 2006, Mireille Huchon published Louise Labbé, Une Créature du Papier. In this book, Huchon argues that Louise Labbé was not a real woman. Rather, she was a group of cynical men that published under the feminine name as a hoax. She claims that Louise Labbé's oeuvres were an exercise of mockery towards women, with men in society at the time aware of this. Uchan represents Labbé more as a feminine figure rather than a feminist figure. She concludes her thoughts in her books by claiming that Labbé and other female authors of this time were in fact prostitutes and not writers. In her argument, Uchan uses no facts, evidence, or contextual data to back up her claims. Rather, she uses a style of writing that is used to distract the reader from the missing evidence and focuses them on overanalyzing Labbe's work and writing structures. She does not form definite conclusion and instead leaves the reader with a small list of what-if questions. There is plenty of evidence to support the existence of Louise Labbe and the confirmation of her authorship. Guillaume Peridin lived between 1510 and 1590, and he has stated that Louise Labbé was a familiar face in town, and she glowed in her beauty, poetry, and purity. He said, C'est avec la face plus angélique qu'humaine, mais ce n'était rien à la comparaison de son esprit tant chaste, tant vertueuse, tant poétique, tant rare en savoir, qu'il semblait qu'il eût crié de Dieu. In other words, he is remarking on her beauty, spirit of chastity, penmanship, and even relates her to being created by God himself. This is the primary source as evidence of Louise Labbé, confirming her to be the angelic feminist poet that we all know and love today.